Hi, we are with um, Harry Lucas. Um, he is a mind reader, mentalist, entertainer, speaker, performer, a TV show producer. Hi, Harry. Thank you. Thank you for letting us in. Sure. First thing first, Harry, I am so impressed by your sense of humor uh, <laughs> that I will just give away all my inner recesses and the secrets, the dark ones, even without you reading them, actually. <laughs> and your stage presence, amazing. Really impressive. Thank you. So, Harry, tell me one thing, you know, there are certain statements like the, the shotgun statements, which you call, or the rainbow ruse, uh, which are so generalized in nature. If you go to a person and you tell them, like, um, you're generally a very warm and kind person, or um, you're very open to people, but sometimes you feel that you, you have been taken for a ride and people have pulled up a fast on you, or you are you're bothered about what is happening in the world and you really want to bring a change. I mean, these are generalized statements, right? It'll, it'll be applicable to everybody. Yes. Right? And so don't people see through, uh, see through this? They don't understand that this is, these are general statements? People see through it if it's um, said to somebody else. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if it's said to yourself, you always accept the flattery. And you okay. always think, oh, how? Uh -huh. Yes. You, obviously, you wouldn't say, uh, I'm a bad person. You, you always say positive things. Correct. People uh, tend to agree when positive things are said to, about them. Correct. And suppose if there is a person or a subject uh, who is very cynical, who is probably even well read about uh, the mechanism of mentalism, yeah. and uh, who is over cautious in revealing anything, then how do you handle it? Well, uh, you can always say that there is no connection. Uh -huh. This is what people tend to say, you know, if there is an over, over cynical person there, mm -hmm. um, you can always say that there is no connection, that you can't work with this person, so that's always working. Correct, but if there is a large group of audience and you mm -hmm. make such a person stand, then how would you exit from there? Well, you just say, I can't connect with you, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are hundreds of others, <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> So, you know, in the digital world, uh, uh, where everybody is on social media and even your audience who comes uh, may have to fill up a form or something like that and you already know their names and probably their date of birth and etc. Yeah. That access is to everybody. Oh yeah. Right? So anybody who can read through this can become a mentalist because I can easily guess your date of birth, right? I can work around it, uh, ask those questions, etc. The cover up questions and get your date of birth. So yes. in the digital world, what is the way to be the true mentalist. Well, I can understand that you got my information from anywhere. Like you just Google, you will get the information. Yeah. Um, I think the, it, all of it has changed. Correct. Because now we are willing to give our information for free. Correct. To companies like Facebook. Correct. It, it, or Google, it will be online anyway. Correct, correct, correct. So now I'd like to make sure that it's that kind of information that you don't put out. Correct. That is so personal to you that you don't um, that you don't put it out on Facebook for me to find. Okay. And the techniques that have always been used, they mm. have been used before Facebook. They correct. have been used before Google was invented, before anybody knew what internet was. Correct, correct, correct. So there are, there are certain techniques that you can use um, mm -hmm. that have nothing to do. Mm. Um, I agree that it's more difficult now because Correct. you have the idea of, oh, I just go on Facebook. Yeah. I just go, <laughs> I just type in the name and you find information. Correct. So I think it has more to do with uh, the presentation yeah. and to make Lovely. sure that people are really thinking of something that I cannot possibly know. That is not on the internet. Correct. So is mentalism about reading a Tony Corinda or a practice or a gifted art? gifted talent? I think it's a combination of many, many things. Um, okay. And what I love about mentalism is the, the possibility co to connect with other people, mm -hmm. to really make a connection with others. Mm -hmm. And so they have an experience that they will take home and they will tell their friends about. Got it. Because it's, 
highly unlikely that you meet a mentalist in your life and if you do it is it is a special occasion and, and if that person tells you what you are thinking mm -hmm. this is Amazing. this is this is, <laughs> this is yeah. something you want to tell your friends about so if mentalism or mind reading truly exists i'm i'm not casting aspersions or doubt on this but i'm just saying if it truly exists then it has to be used more beyond uh, entertainment uh, like uh, averting a crime or averting a war or even playing chess why is it limited to entertainment then i mean i'm sure there are people who have made money out of dowsing a uh, mentalist yeah but there can be more applications to this oh yeah there are actually there are there are medical applications right now that people mm -hmm. are you know have lost who have lost a limb mm -hmm. um, they are um, they are building an artificial arm right now that you can control with your mind um, have you oh, heard about yes, this yes. Uh, so there is a exoskeleton uh, yeah it's uh, like an exoskeleton it's like an artificial hand where you yeah, just yeah. think just grab and it grabs correct correct and uh, that you is EEG yes or you, neurosensor yes and you kind of feel it and i correct. think this is this is a wonderful application because it's it's yeah. not mind reading but it's it's um, taking taking thoughts and mm. putting it into something uh, real and, 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 and graspable and during the cold war times you know uh, people were trained in both sides to be poker faced yes to not give expressions and they went through a hard and rigorous training for that and if your subject is of that kind then it doesn't give away anything Mm. I would easily give because I am very expressive and I will smile, I will frown, I will raise my eyebrows, I will do all sort of things and I have no problem in doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So if it is poker faced, like the people who play this uh, poker, they are very poker faced and that is their art because yes. otherwise they don't give away anything from their face. Yes. Yeah. Then so in that think. case. So they think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You could be a you could be a very good poker player. Ah, yeah. yeah. Nobody wants to play with me. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing, you know. Yeah. Um, if you try to freeze your face, uh -huh. so there is no expression whatsoever, uh -huh. there will be something else. Your body will always speak. So perhaps it's your your foot. Perhaps it's it's shaking like this, which correct. you cannot see right now. But I'm 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 doing this. Yes. Correct. Correct. Under the table. Um, so probably that, mm. yes, or probably, I don't know, it's a little twitch with your shoulder. It can be anything. Mm. And these are the signs that poker players, professional poker, poker players, like to look for. And it's not about the hand you're having, it's about how do you react now, and once I see the cards, I can attribute whatever you gave me mm -hmm. to those cards. So you had a good hand, mm -hmm. you expressed yourself in that way. Mm -hmm. And how do you behave if you have a bad hand? Mm -hmm. And then these are the tells, so-called mm -hmm. tells. And mm -hmm. I'm looking for those tells. And it takes a couple of hours, most probably, to find out mm -hmm. what your tells are. And then uh, I'm looking for those. On your show, actually, you made everybody stand up and take this solemn oath, yes. uh, oath that you did not pre-arrange with anybody. Now, it is known that people put plans and it has been there for time immemorial. So you you feel that um, uh, your mentalism has evolved more than just putting plants and accomplice and getting your show done, or how is it now? So you're asking if there are any plants in my show? <laughs> <laughs> you read my mind. I'm sending you my thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Just imagine uh, you're a lay person and you have to accomplish that. Yeah. You would probably say, oh, it's easy. I just put my friends in the audience and they say whatever I want them. Yeah. Yes. So that's the easy thing. I've done that actually. Even my Viva times, in my presentation, I just put friends, I give them questions. This is what you have to ask me and I'll answer you. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so this yeah. is what you do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I'm doing is um, I'm performing around the world and I've met you for the very first time. Correct, correct. Um, and this is what always happens, you know, correct. it would be um, it would be too expensive to bring all your friends all the time. And correct. It would be interesting if you go to a company and they hire you somewhere mm -hmm. and all of a sudden there were people that they don't know. 
mm. it would be fishy. It would be. Hmm? Yes. Well, why does he read only those people's <laughs> minds? Correct, correct. But I love the fact when um, my technician, my sound and uh, light technician, uh, at one time he came, he came to me after the show, theater mm. show, and he said it was so funny because. Uh, right in front of me, so at the mm. very back of the theatre, there mm. was a man who was constantly complaining. Ah, these are all stooges, these are all plants, <laughs> everything is arranged here. <laughs> and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. I got him to stand up and I read his mind. Yeah. And then his <laughs> mouth dropped and, it, and he, he didn't know what to think now. Mm. Because obviously he was not a plant, he was not an accomplice. Got it. And I still read his mind. Uh, there are two questions we ask every influencer, uh, and Harry, you are a great influencer. All right, if so you say so. <laughs> yeah, if, and I really mean it. <laughs> so, Harry, what is your word to the youth? You are young, of course, but yet, yet, uh, to the young people. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you've seen the, the the performance I gave at the TEDx mm -hmm. Vienna. Uh, and when I do this in my show, I sometimes uh, meet people who just say or think, what shall I do with my future? What, mm. what is the purpose of my life? Mm. And it's interesting that, I, that, it's, that it's more common than not that I meet those kind of people who don't know what to do with their life. Mm. And I think the most important thing on the, the worthwhile thing in life is to find something that you're passionate about. Mm. Something that you really, really want to do. Mm. That makes you excited when you think about it. Got it. And if you find something like that, then your life will be a better one. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Um, the sentiment behind our journey, Harry, uh, Sudhir and I, traveling to 60 countries, 70,000 kilometers, is celebrate life. It's amazing. And we are <laughs> sure you celebrate life uh, because otherwise you wouldn't do what you're doing. So what, according to you, Harry, is celebrating life? I think it's, it's exactly that. It's connecting with people and I love what I do. I love to perform. I love to see people when they leave the theatre show uh, or the corporate show Correct. with a smile on their face. And if I can just take people out of their usual life, everyday life and just make them wonder again and smile again, Correct. Uh, if I can achieve that, that's Lovely. the biggest accomplishment I can I can ask for. Lovely. That is so nice of you, Harry, and it, is, it has been Such amazing, a pleasure. amazing uh, talking to you.